Hi and welcome to Configmas, a month-long user group party. This is day three and we're coming back to you with another video. I'm Johan. And I'm Amy. Welcome. Let's get this party started, shall we? We shall indeed. So today is going to be a really fun day. The best day. The best day because it is... OSD day! OSD day! I think we need to say that more. Very shiny! <laughs> yes. yeah, I'm not too good with the yassy part, but you are, so... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, there are a lot of changes in 1910 for OSD. Uh, stuff that has been just waiting for for so long, seen it in the technical previews, and now it's there. It's finally there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. anything you want Super to show? Great. Yeah, for sure. If we head on over to my screen mm -hmm. in just a moment. So over here on my screen, the first thing that I would like to show is the um, copying a condition in a sequence. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this condition and move my mouse slowly because I'm using live zoom, copy it, and we can go to another step in the test sequence. So I'm just going to go next step in the list, go to options, and then go ahead and um, over here and maybe here and we'll just say paste, paste under and there we go. There is my step that I had copied where I was starting my sequence off with a reboot, as you do. Let's do if you're not already in WinPE, huh. I'm not saying that this is what you should do, just copy conditions from one step to another, but it's really shiny that now you have that ability to yep. do that. You don't have to like have things uh, test sequence editor window side by side to try and match conditions. You can just yeah. copy it. This is super great. I feel like this is one of those life changing things. Yeah. So I'm really happy about this. Yes. What else? Well, there's lots of other things that we can talk about for sure. Um, did you know that now you can search in a sequence? So um, this will be another job for live zoom. I had to file some feedback already because when I search in the search box, it gets covered with a tooltip yeah. about how many results it returned. Yeah. So. On my screen, it only uh, over like 50%. On yours, it was almost 100%. Yeah. And I saw some other MVPs commenting as well and say, yeah, this is a bug. So here's the test sequence that I use a lot at work. So um, there's going to be a lot of steps in the sequence for a branch cache. But let's say that there weren't very many. Yeah. And I wanted to know, hey, am I actually enabling branch cache in this? Um, or even what port am I setting? Um, if I'll just search for the port. So here's a step that um, one result found where I'm setting the correct branch cache port yep. right here. So it highlights it for me and I can see the value here. I'm setting it in a variable, so that's great. There were other things that I wanted to search for as well. Like like I said, uh, you do have to spell it right. Yeah. Um, All of them. So then it finds everything. Again, it gets highlighted, which is also super shiny. So this is great for the sequences where you have lots and lots of steps, um, mm -hmm. such as a sequence like this. I had to zoom all the way out to show that there are a ton of steps in here um, that you would... Set for branch cache. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So um, I really like this and I'm super, super excited about it. And also, okay, I guess I really want to exit. <laughs> Speaking of that, you can now set um, a high performance power plan yep. for a test sequence. So all you do is click on the sequence that you want and then click on properties and go to the performance tab and then you can click to run this as a high performance power plan. Yes. Why would that be shiny, Johan? So it doesn't do anything if you do it on, on a VM, it basically do, do no difference. Yeah. But on, on hardware, it, it can do between 20 and, and up to 40% difference in, in speed. And this is working both for in-place upgrades and for bare metal deployments. The only difference is if you have this check that Amy showed you and you do a bare metal deployment, it won't record the power plan you had before because you had none. It's a bare metal deployment. It was nothing. Mm -hmm. But if you do this for an in-place upgrade, it actually it, it makes a note of what you had. It runs the sequence in, in full power or, or as we call it, non-high, tree hugging mode. Yeah. <laughs> High and performance then, power plan? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. And, and uh, we store it back when it's done. So definitely make sure that you have a cable plugged in, power cable, if you're running this on a laptop. Yes. Where maybe you got 
13 hours battery life because you're probably going to get less <laughs> a lot less than that for yeah. sure um so be I, very actually, careful. i've seen a lot of customers they putting in a step in the sequence has a pre-flight check if you're not plugged in abort yeah so that's that makes sense all right you done i think so yeah yeah cool so one thing that i know that in, in 1910 was that on the boot image now if i go to properties here in a week working on this uh, in the customization part you can now specify the default keyboard layout so that's nice that's awesome yes uh, usually english is just fine but you know weird countries like sweden they have weird <laughs> characters and sometimes you type in something and it needs to be right i feel that pain because i've tried to type on your swedish keyboard yeah many times aren't they great it, well, it, I mean, it's fine if you slow down, but typically when I need to use it is when I'm presenting and I'm showing something on your computer and I feel like it's my first day typing. Yeah. So this is good. Yeah, yeah. It helps technicians With the in the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so another very nice feature in uh, 1910 is the ability, when you do deployment over CMD, Cloud Management Gateway, prior to 1910, if you had a sequence, it would download every single package that sequence referenced, no matter if it was needed or not, to the machine before it started the sequence. Now it supports download on demand. So now you can have your 12, 13, 40, 50 different driver packages, and it's only going to download the one that actually is used to deployment. So that's, that's shiny. Setting. Yeah, so that's cool. I, I can't demo that for, I don't have that set up in this lab, but it's, uh, it's a new feature in 1910. Uh, a thing I can demo though is when you import images. So if I add in an OS image here, I click browse, uh, provide a location where I have my install bin, happen to be this location here. It has the ability of extracting a specific index and it actually adds another win with that index in that folder. So that's pretty cool. Now. So Should do you, you need to account for storage space then? A little bit, okay. yeah. Twice the storage, but uh, quite frankly, I, I personally, I don't think I will use this feature because I usually extract this before I add the image. Mm -hmm. And I use a tool like always the builder or something like that. When which? When which mm -hmm. uh, hooks into that process or, or component. Yeah. And to make sure that the image is fully up to date before I even add it. Exactly. So, but it's there. It's, it's a nice addition that they added it. Another cool thing is actually inside the sequences themselves. Um, so if I pick one of my sequences here, I go to one of my native sequences. And if you look at the run command line action, I'm just going to add one here real quick. You can now output the result of the command line into a variable that you can use later in the sequence. So you can have a little script that figures out something and then you can use that as conditions or whatever you like uh, later in the sequence. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that was added is, uh, I mean, the debugger has been there for a while now, uh, but you have to tell it that you want to use the debugger and then it always runs the debugger. Now you can actually set a variable. It's called TS debug on error. Assuming I spend it correctly. True. And that way, when you have this one in, it's going to show the debugger if the sequence breaks for whatever reason. And that's perfect, because then you have tools to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. And you can not next, next finish or try to, to set a, a breakpoint or something, but that's nice. And is this a variable that you only set one time? Yeah, only one time. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, in the beginning of the sequence is quite Preferred, useful. Preferred, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another few small changes that was related to language pack. If you look in the apply window settings, there is a whole new area in the below where you can set the time zone, input, keyboard, UI language and all that stuff. Okay. So this together with the upcoming changes in 20H1 where you can have a different system language than install language. It's going to be very shiny because that's been one of the pain points for people doing in-place upgrades with different languages. Yeah, because, again, simplifying life for yeah. people who are actually going through the process. Yeah, I mean, in the current build, you have to, if it was a different language, you have to switch it back mm -hmm. to English, do the upgrade and then change it again. It's just messy. Um, another minor change is mostly for, for timing issues during in-place upgrades, but there is a new variable called setup complete pause. 
and it's in seconds so it will simply have the setup engine pause that many seconds until it starts the sequence again. So if you ever had problem with it not being fully initialized, the config man agent, etc, etc, mm -hmm. you can give it some more time. Yeah, that's so, a really good idea. Yeah, and that was actually, dang, that was, that was all the OSD features. This is fun stuff. <sighs> Super shiny. Yes. So thank you once again for watching our video. We will be coming back with back to you um, on another day with another video. We're also doing blog posts this month too. So not every day will be a video, but hopefully we will have some more shiny videos. Yes. All right. Thank you guys.